Hi, Pashi. Hey, how are you? I'm good. You know, we put out trailers for these episodes, and that's the only visual representation of the podcast that people are seeing. Yeah. And someone said something very hurtful to me. Oh, no. They said my headphones were so big, I looked like a luggage handler. <laughs> I mean, I wear, I believe, the identical headphones to you. I think, yeah, I think it's something about my head makes it look... I don't know. They do. They are. Even now I'm looking at you. I think because mine are gray. And by the way, these are headphones that podcast experts have told me to wear. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't out I mean, looking for the biggest pair of headphones. I think I got the all blacks. And yeah, yeah. the gray is not doing you any favors. You do sort of. You look like you work on a ship in uh-huh. like Star Wars. You're like, you're not yeah. flying the ship, but they're like, hey, is there everything good here? And you're like. Yep, you got yeah, it, Captain. You're right. It's not a cool, <laughs> it's not a costume kids want to wear for Halloween. I want the guy who helped land the ships. <laughs> I'm definitely wearing a jumpsuit. I feel like that goes without saying. Yeah. Another thing, not to keep drilling down on the way I currently look on a non-visual medium, but you can attest the fact that I'm, you know, I'm growing a beard. Not growing a beard. It's more like I'm not currently seeing the team of people that shave my face, but (laughs) it's gray, right? You can see some gray. Yes. yes. And my wife, Alexi, you know her well. Mm -hmm. She said, you can, you really, you really can see the gray right now. And I said, I think it's because I'm so tan. The gray is popping. And then she said, I think you're just older. Yeah. No, I, I think she's right. I think if you're looking but for I the do com- feel like I do feel like she should have left some space there for it maybe just to be that I'm tan. I didn't, you know, we didn't really have to immediately go to the passage of time. Yeah, but I think looking for that sort of contrast explanation on your part is was wishful thinking. Do you think my maybe my eyes are getting bluer? <laughs> it might be hard for you to tell right now because your eyes are probably being drawn to the giant headphones. Yeah, well, my eyes are also getting worse. I wear glasses. You still are refusing to wear glasses, and I don't know how that's possible. It's true. Yeah. Other people have mentioned, and again, we're this is episode four, so it's very exciting to be, we're, we're now living in a time where people have been able to listen to our podcast, and I am happy to get some feedback. Oh, yeah, same. Someone said, love the podcast if there's one issue, and this is an issue we knew coming in. You guys sound a little bit alike. Yeah, but... Does it matter Yeah, if you don't know who said something? Are people keeping score out there? Yeah, guys, just be in a world where either one, two, or three people are talking at any given time. <laughs> I thought of maybe a solution. You did Pee Wee Herman's Broadway show. Yeah. You were both on stage as a fireman. Mm-hmm. And you also did some voices of some of the Pee Wee's Playhouse characters. I did, yeah. Which, who, did you do Clocky? Was that right? I did, that yeah, right? I did Conky, Clocky, Randy. There was a Sham Wow, the fish, okay. one of the flowers. Um, I've done Terry occasionally. Don't do the voice. Do you have a favorite voice? Um, don't do it. Just tell me which one. Yeah, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I mean, Clocky, because he's so just like simple and sweet. Okay, so guys, this would be the podcast if Josh sounded like Clocky and not like me. Hey, everybody, I'm Seth. Hey, I'm Josh. See, you don't want that. <laughs> you, you guys don't want that. No. Um, very excited about our guest today. Oh, me too. Amy Schumer. We both have been lucky enough to be friends with her for a very long time. Here's a fun fact. She's married to Chris Fisher, who was the chef at my wedding. Yeah. Small That's world. a fun fact, right? I feel like I can get away with saying that. I th- well, it's true. So yeah, <laughs> but did you think yeah. it was also? It's true, but did you think it was also fun? Uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on how you define fun. Oof, certainly, based on your reactions. <laughs> more, <laughs> more, more, more fun like, than oh uh, boy, like, <laughs> it wasn't like going going I'll tell down you a this. slide. I'll when tell you're you this: three. if I told Clocky, if I told, hey Clocky, did you think that was a fun fact? Yeah, it'd be good. <laughs> All right, so Amy Schumer, she is the best. She's so authentic. She's so genuine. She has a great new special on Netflix called Emergency Contact. And you ready to talk to her? Yeah, love it. All right, well, in that case, it's time 
for family trips with the Myers Brothers. And if you need a third source to prove that to you, here's Jeff Tweedy. You are very, just want our listeners to know how wood paneled your, your <laughs> they podcast can't, room is. They can't imagine. <laughs> they can't imagine how wood paneled I am right now. You are tie dyed and wood paneled. This could be, other than the fact that the technology didn't exist, this could be a podcast from the 70s. I am Dahmer. <laughs> oh, you're the, are you the new Dahmer? I'm the new Dahmer. Well, I have to tell you, I'm in a shed. I don't yeah. know if you've seen this shed at our house, but it's a shed. Chris is slowly moving in here. Oh, that's nice. But I'm very much in a shed. Yeah. Is Chris, your husband, moving in there on his own accord, or are you gently pushing him towards the shed? No, he, it's of his own is his own accord. You know, like every year I I find more out about him, like, and he'll be like, oh yeah, like that year I lived in a shed. And I'm like, what? You know, like just sort of <laughs> little alarming facts. Um you know, like, oh, okay, no plumbing or no, uh, you know, and it's like, okay. And I think that's, that's probably where he was his most happy. And so he's actually sort of slowly moving into this shed. It's it's like the opposite of finding out your spouse took an exciting gap year to Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you about right, my shed right. year? Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, it's it's bad. And he like, and I'll see a picture of like the shed and there's like a, guitar and I'm like you played guitar and he's like a little bit like so I'm like so you would bring like a, a woman back to your shed and he said yeah that he had he brought women back to his shed and played guitar for them and I was like really horrified and I'm sorry and you are the new Dahmer and I you right. stick with that <laughs> well I'm in Chris's Dahmer shed to do this <laughs> some people have a man cave and some people have a Dahmer shed. you look like you're in you're in a coffin I do look like I'm in a coffin. You're in a, I'm in you sort look buried of, alive. It's an alcove. I get, what do you call it? I don't know. Josh, you're behind, it looks normal. Josh's background looks Josh normal. Josh is the only one that looks normal. Yeah, yeah I'm in, yeah. You look like an you're apartment. on a set of a normal sh like show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a break between sitcom tapings. We're going to ask you about family vacations when you're a kid, but you have a new special. It's very funny called Emergency Contact that's available to watch on Netflix. And it was oh, yeah. exciting for me because I I had seen you do it a yes. few times before I watched it, including one time <laughs> I saw you do it in a barn. Yes. You saw and me do it in two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a barn and also sort of at another kind of barn with a cat on stage. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You a know? community center and a barn. And then I did see you do it in a proper theater that's right yeah we performed together you were nice enough to let me open for you when you were um when you were on the road in boston and like you know get and i was starting to get this act ready and and i never did but now it's on netflix <laughs> <laughs> i should say that this was you and i were hanging out in the summer and you were saying i really want to start getting back on stage again and i said yeah i'm doing a show in boston tonight and you just said i'm gonna open for you Oh, and, really? <laughs> but it was really fun because we traveled to Boston together, which was a blast. And then the real blast is introducing an opener and having the opener be you. That is genuinely the most excited, I think, an audience. They kind of, I paid for it a little bit because I do think that when I walked off, people were like, oh, right, 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 right. No, I guess he's the, no, no but it was, really, it great, was exciting and fun. You had a beautiful audience and they were, they but, were more um, excited to see you. It was so fun, but yeah, but it's out on Netflix now. Do you feel great relief when something you've spent so much time fine tuning is now finally out in the world? No, not really. Do you? I don't think so. I do either. I don't know. As I asked it, I was like, I mean, I've only had the one. Yeah. So I don't know if I felt really, I felt relief the day after I taped it. That yeah. was like the greatest day of just relief. Well, I've been nervous that Hilaria Baldwin is going to be upset with me. Yes. Um, and Alec Baldwin. So I just sort of, 
have been waiting for this special to come out. Like, you know, because I talk about their marriage a little bit and poke yeah. fun. And so, yeah, so I've been a little bit like cautious about that. And um, and no, no, no report yet. No, like sort of not really, you know, tabloids are trying to, you know, stir it up. Yeah. And uh, but I think it's like just we're kind of riding it out and it's going to go quietly away. I, I, knock on wood. When you're waiting for something to maybe hit like that, hanging out in a shed, hiding out in yeah. a shed, it's a pretty good place to be. <laughs> I definitely left Brooklyn and was like, all right, bye. You know, nobody can, you know, I, I, I did run to safety. I am, I'm weak. I will say the reason you talk about them yeah. is to prove a point, And I don't want to give it away because yeah. it is a very resounding point it's a, but it's like I, I hope i leave it in a sweet place where i'm saying something sweet yes. about their marriage but yes you know it is um they are sort of an extreme example of something that you argue should be true of all married couples that i think is true of all married couples that is true yes you, you know yeah. married couples who stay together right yeah josh are you, josh have you gotten married yet i have not oh no. interesting yeah, yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because yeah. it, I do feel like it's probably a hands-off topic on yeah. the podcast, but I feel like I'm allowed to talk about it if the guest brings it up. <laughs> yeah, I brought it up. And Josh, yeah. you're, you're how old? You're 20 what? Uh, 2047. 47. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're, wait till you're ready to get married, honestly. Yeah, take your time. And again, <laughs> yeah. wait till you find the right person. How long have mm-hmm. you been dating your girlfriend? Our anniversary is in a couple weeks, and it yeah. will be 10 years. Okay, cool. So no, yeah. it's fine. You and Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell like <laughs> live how you want and we'll all do the other thing that everybody else does. Yeah. Yeah. Well and you just have a grand old time just <laughs> going through life with the most loving Instagram posts. Uh yeah. They just they seem I guess that's the thing, is at least at least my wife can't say, why can't we be happy and married like your brother and his girlfriend? Because yeah. then I get to point out, well, that I think the big part here might be that they're just not right. they left out that part. That's the thing. We're happy. We'll see what happens. I love her very much. Oh, she that's is, nice. Uh, Do you want to talk yeah. about this more, Josh? Or <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get into your, uh, these family trips. Oh, okay. Family, family trips. Okay. okay. So, Amy, you grew up. With your wonderful sister, mm-hmm. Kim, Kim, who we've both been lucky enough to know. We've yes. both been lucky enough to hang out with, play poker with. Yeah. And do you? what is your first memory of family trips? So I also have a, an often forgotten older brother named Jason, who's a jazz musician. Um, and, you know, with families, as you know, there are, it's a constant negotiation and y- you have varying degrees of closeness to each other at times. You know, there's times where I talk to the, them both every day, several times a day. And then there's like years where we don't keep up that much, you know, but going on trips with my family. Um, when, 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 when I first thought about this podcast, I thought about some of our family trips, some of our, you know, insane excursions and the situations really that my mom put us in just like very dangerous dangerous how like one day, like we she'd be like all of a sudden she'd be like let's go hiking and my mom was really not good so we had like no money but she'd be like i sold the couch and we're going to a and b <laughs> in pennsylvania and we're gonna you know whitewater raft on the delaware and we're like what and then we'd be like going for a hike and we'd get lost and we'd wind up like one time we had to hitchhike and it was um we hitchhiked with like an 18 wheeler that drove us just because we got lost on a hike like she had us, she had my brother hide because she thought they wouldn't pick up a boy. And he kind of ran out once the truck pulled <laughs> over. And then, yeah. And we all went on this one time, this, you know, you can whitewater raft on the Delaware. I didn't know. Believe, believe it know. or not. But it's so tame that you can do it self-guided. And I was probably 12 and um, which would make my sister like around nine, my brother like 16. And, and they told us, but, you know, the only thing you need to know about this whitewater raft experience is you're going to come to a fork in the road and you really need to go to the right. Because if you go to the left, there's this huge electric eel trap where if the boat goes up on it, there's all these spikes and the, you know, so that these eels get caught and it, it being incredibly dangerous, but go to the right. You know, and so what everyone in my family did was we all 
while they were saying that, tuned out and just thought, I'm sure somebody else is listening to which way <laughs> we're supposed to go right now. So when we got to the thing, we said, which way did they say to go? And everyone's like, I thought you were listening. And I thought you were listening. And we went to the left. And we went to the left. And we quickly realized that we were supposed to go to the right and that we were heading for, honestly, death. Honestly. Did yeah. you see was the electric eel trap visible? Let me just point yeah. out, by the way, uh -huh. the minute they said that the water was so full of eels they needed a trap, <laughs> I would have been. But did you see it? Were you coming towards it? Yeah. So then we were coming towards it and we saw where we were headed. And there was like kind of a little like a last possible second. It wasn't even an option for a drop off. It was a full waterfall. It was like a, a, an actual severe waterfall. And so all of a sudden it went from a very peaceful coast down the Delaware to um, we are going to die in this electric eel trap. And so we all had to work together to get the boat down this waterfall. And it was like went from such peace to such chaos and terror and screaming. And I'd never heard my mom curse before. And my brother had to get out of the boat because we got stuck on a rock and there was water pouring in the boat. And, you know, she said, get the fuck in the boat. And then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden we were just back on like normal water. And it was like very chill. We all could not believe that had happened. Hopping out of the boat that, you know, into water that has electric eels in it. Uh, now, I want to ask a question. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to clarify. Is this a trap for electric eels or is it a trap for regular eels and the trap is electric? Okay, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I think like it was like there were stakes that they were supposed to get caught on. And I kind of feel like in my mind, it's like they were supposed to be electrocuted. But I mean, that just seems insane. Yeah. That does seem insane. I need to follow. I need like a, a real follow up where I get where I get the info. But like. Because I think the way you trap an electric eel is like you put. I think, because I think they eat batteries, you just dangle a little battery slightly <laughs> above the water. I didn't know you, you fish were with such, a battery. Uh, you're the guy that goes on late night shows like with with exotic animals, right? Yes, and but you, no like... information about them. <laughs> that would be really funny. That would be a really funny segment. And they're all in, in black boxes and then you lift off the lid and I have to in real time give you my best guess for how you catch them. I can't believe that you right now are not doing a TV show. It's heartbreaking. It's really wild. I know it's like, you know, I know you're thinking about your staff and, and like their jobs and everything and all that like human stuff. But also just you not having a show right now, like is so weird to me. Like I it's just a very it's very strange. <laughs> like and I it... don't understand what you're doing. <laughs> Do you go as for well, walks? He looks like he's in a coffin. And, uh, <laughs> he uh, hides in a yeah. coffin. He's this in is, an the, this is the thrust of it. And then we... Wait, how much older is Jason than you? He's three and a half years. And then Kim is how much younger? Three and a half, yeah. Okay, so you're you're kind of a... When you, when you went in... I mean, your parents got divorced when you were a teenager? Yeah, when I was like 10, 11, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember trips with everybody? Was it all five of you ever? No, no. My dad okay. was a guttural alcoholic and uh but and like he tried to um like he'd be like I'm going to take you guys on a road trip like whenever my dad would be like I'm do I'm going to take you guys somewhere it always was like so dark and it ended in like one time he was like I'm going to take you to see rent and we were like okay and then like we got there at like 3 you know for the matinee and they were like these are for the night and we were like, oh, that's all right, dad. You know, and he was just sitting there, like sitting on a fire hydrant, like just sad, like defeated and tired. And, you know, he went home. We stayed. We had a great time. We saw rent. But it was like d dad's excursions always ended in absolute trauma. But there's a road trip I wanted to talk about that I thought I might might be able to bring to this podcast that maybe somebody great. else couldn't, which is I had this like evil grandma, my mom's mom. She's like very, very mean woman. And she loved going on cruises. So in college, you know, you're so like I was so poor. If you had like a grandparent that would let you like just lay next to them in, in, in Florida, wherever they're like dying, you're like, great. Like that was a spring <laughs> break, you know. And my grandma was like, I'm like, let's go on a cruise like you and me. So 
went on a cruise with my grandma. And she was mean your whole life. She you always knew her as a mean grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She was she was like really mean to my mom. Was she your mom's mom? Yeah. And like a major narcissist. We would have this game where the challenge was to try to say something that she couldn't relate to herself. But you, there's <sighs> no one ever won. In college, my job was kickbox. It was a kickbox instructor. And I was like, yeah, I'm just sore because I taught a lot of kickboxing classes this week. And she goes, I didn't teach kickboxing classes this week. It was like, wow. <laughs> you know, it was like, okay. But but anyway, she loved gambling. And so she agreed to take me on this cruise. And so I went on this like carnival, you know, or whatever cruise with my grandma. We shared a room and we would like eat meals together. And then she would gamble and I would like drink and try and hook up with guys. And yeah, and like I had the best time. So you did, you did not regret it. No, I didn't. I didn't regret it. And this guy, this like beautiful guy, like we hooked up and I don't know if this is a kind of, you know, podcast where you could say, but like, I remember he was like going down on me. I was like laying on the the, like this deck late at night, (laughs) like, you know, knowing my grandma was like sleeping soundly in her little room with a portal, like. Just like the, life is going to be great, you know. And um, <laughs> no, I'm so glad I did want to ask where the hooking up takes place when you share a tiny cabin with your I grandmother. Was but it's on the, the deck roof. of the the deck of the ship. Yeah, I was on the deck, and there must be footage. I mean, there must be footage somewhere. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Someone can Above security deck. cameras. Well, security cameras were more expensive in those days. Now yeah, they're right. everywhere. Now they're everywhere. They didn't have Nest at the time. But did you feel any closer with your grandmother at the end of the trip? No. Okay. No. What did you call her? Gaga. Gaga. Okay. Right. Which is what Chris, my husband, also called his grandma, who I got to meet. Hmm. They're really two Gagas. What two Gagas. Mm-hmm. Oh. Is that mm-hmm. a cultural? Uh, does that come from any nationality or is it just what you called them? I don't know. I know that she was Protestant. Mm-hmm. Chris's grandma, godless woman. Real godless woman. <laughs> God just kidding. Does for Wait, you must have met Chris's grandma over the years. Did you I ever meet her, Seth? I mean, she was I I very, did. she was so sweet. She was so, so old. Um, Yeah, and Chris it's would so just hot. push her. I remember when she walked by, I remember <laughs> like, ga, 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 Yeah. What were your, uh, do you remember what your ports of call were on that cruise? Were you? Oh, my God. We definitely went to the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like Florida. And then you're just like on the sea for one full day and everyone's throwing up and then. And then the Bahamas and then like some island that the cruise line owns and they charge you like, you know, eight dollars for a signature cocktail like Coco Loco or just something that's absolute trash. <laughs> uh, and this is all your your grandmother is paying for everything. Though. My grandma's got put, footing the bill and I was just in heaven, you know, uh, cornrows. Do you think you did cornrows on a trip like that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I never did. But okay. I did have cornrow envy. Yeah, um, it sounds like a trip where a lot of that would go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when people would get back and have the braids or whatever. I mean, it's so funny that no one ever thought it was problematic, like no, at yeah. all. Because um, it today looks problematic immediately. It's real problematic. It's yeah. really not. It's really not what you're supposed what you're supposed to do. Have you have you guys gone on have you gone on f- uh, many family road trips? We did a a great amount of family road trips. Never like monster long road trips. We used to fly to Florida a lot, and we would drive to visit our sets of grandparents who were Pittsburgh and Massachusetts when we were living in Michigan. So those were sort of sizable drives. And then we would like before we lived in New Hampshire, which is like. We moved there when I was five and Seth was seven, something like that. We would go visit our grandmother in Massachusetts and we would drive up into New England and we would go sort of these to these touristy spots that were in New Hampshire and thereabouts. How long of a trip? Was it like five hours in the car or something? Yeah, I feel like that's probably the max we would do in a day. That's yeah. such a long time for a kid to be in a car. I, if I had a catchphrase, it was how much more longer, which was obviously <laughs> the incorrect way to say it. Yeah. And my dad would correct me every time, and uh, which I, I have so much uh, appreciation for because my kids say stuff wrong all the time and I don't correct them. I'm just no, like, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, no. Are we supposed to correct them? Uh, I don't know. It depends I on what so. it depends on if you want your kids to get better at saying stuff. 
Yeah. Right. I just feel like he'll figure. He'll learn. He'll learn. He'll figure it out down the road. So when you first start making, because it doesn't sound like you're having uh, the sort of luxury vacation experience, you start making a little money. Do you ever take your family? I mean, I know Kim travels with you a great deal, but like, did you ever take your mom on a, you know, thank you for taking us on the, the River of Eels trip? Yes. Kim and I have like, we did like a really fun you know, backpack through Europe, stay in youth hostels thing Mm -hmm. where we almost like I just got us much like my mom just got us in so many incredibly dangerous situations where I think we were almost sold into sex trafficking. But like in terms of like my mom, she's come to the vineyard a lot and I've paid for her to like go to Italy, you know, like go do stuff. But, you know, I don't know about you. Like I I, I no, I do know about you actually. And family is something that you can only spend a certain amount of time with. And like my friend Rose, you know Rosebud Baker, the comedian. She's pr- she's pregnant. She just went to Italy with her mom for two weeks. Yeah, it's a long time. Like that's an insane. That's an insane thing to do. Yeah, that's insane. So I, I don't know if this just happens to every women of a certain age and if it's going to come for me, but like the sort of like wanting to take joy in every aspect and point everything out is like infuriating. And I can't, (laughs) you know, like, look at, look at this, look at the way they have milk here. Look at the way they serve milk here. You know, it's like, I just, you know, that just makes me go completely brain dead. Yeah, I feel like when you and Chris travel, probably no one's ever uh, talking about how anything's made. Chris and I don't speak to each other for a couple days at a time just so we can save things up. No, we don't. Um, we don't want to, you know, we'll go like, this is so nice. You know, we try to show gratitude and appreciate it, but we don't try to be like, you know, just the, the idea of like thinking that you're adorable for enjoying something. Yeah. You know, like I'm isn't it interesting about me that I'm taking notice of this thing? Yeah, it's just a little too much. When you watch those, let's say you're on a United flight and the pre-flight video that shows travelers, mm-hmm. they're just things I realize I'm never going to do. I'm never going to be <laughs> in a foreign spice market and just lift up <laughs> sort of fresh, some like fresh turmeric and just be like, like it, everything they do in those videos, I'm. Oh I wanna. I wish I had that sort of joy in in my life, but it's always just like two really beautiful. I'm never gonna run <laughs> with my spouse through the the breaking surf. Even like I was watching. Um, you hurt my feelings last night. Have you mm-hmm. seen it yet? The, the uh, Nicole Hall the, Center. The, no, I haven't. Is no, it wonderful? It's, it's good, amazing. Yeah. I it's, loved it. I really loved it, and um, and the performances are great, but. It's just funny the way that married couples interact in movies and stuff like, you know, that they'll like kind of just stop in the, you know, in the bedroom for a second, just kind of like look at each other, take each other in, kind of, you know, kiss for a second. Like, I'm like, who has a marriage? Like, who's doing this? Like, is this is this real? Is this sufficient in me? Like, is is this what marriage is supposed to look like? Or is this just what marriage looks like in movies? Like, I don't know anyone who's like. They'll just kind of take a minute. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Some, You know what? I find it more if we're hanging out with other people. I could see, you know, you put your hand on your spouse's back. You connect with them. You, you, I, I understand that. But the sort of like day to day of like what marriage looks like on film and in TV is like so foreign to me. And like and, and sex and like the way that that stuff is portrayed. It's like not one of us is never like. Hey, like kind of turned on, like initiate out of nowhere. It's just, I just, it's just so foreign to me that I'm like, am I doing this wrong or is this not real? If Alexi had one of those cinematic (laughs) moments where we were folding clothes and she just stopped and took me in, I would text her sister and say, I think, I think she had a stroke. It was a short one. You'd be like, she had a tiny, she's on opioids. (laughs) She's secretly on something because she, she sort of like right. took stock of me as a human, right? And 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 in a positive way. No, for your partner to even notice you that you're in the room is haunting. You know, <laughs> uh, um, 
you know my sister-in-law very well yes Ariel, yeah one of my I best had to friends make a video i had to make a video for my um mother and father-in-law tom and joanne and i it was just me saying it was an Did hour they have ago. an anniversary or something no, they were. I just made it to show them what was happening. I was. I oh. said, uh, "Hey, I'm just having a romantic lunch with your daughter," and I turned the phone around, and, and it it's... was just her and Ariel sitting shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> and I just said, "When is the last time you saw your daughter sit that close to me?" Yeah, and just the two of them. Right, 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 right. No, <laughs> so no, no. So that's a thing too, where you can't say, "But I'm with you every day," because they're with each other every day, and they're no. just doing fine. They're no, thriving. they're actually having a really beautiful marriage. They really I'm, are. I'm jealous of their marriage. Right, because they live in different houses. No, it's perfect. So it's they're, a perfect they're marriage. Doing, they're doing it completely right. So this got away from family trips, but since we're talking about marriage, oh, yeah. how long have you been dating Mackenzie, Josh? <laughs> yeah, Josh, what, what's... <laughs> it's is, coming up. 10 it's, years? 10, yeah, 10? we're coming up on 10. 10 years Some people dating. feel ready for an engagement after 10 years. Mm-hmm. Some people I've met... Yeah, but some outliers. When you when you know, you know. Yeah, that's you true. Know? That's what I've been told. Yeah, I've been told. I don't that. know, but then it's like, why get married? Also, like, well, you I, guys well, are making a great not, case. Yeah, for exactly. It. Yeah, we're kind of. We're, <laughs> you're in a shed that your husband's moving into, and <laughs> Seth's in an attic. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, no, surprised I mean, to be recognized or even noticed. You by have his to wife. hide from your family. That's part of marriage. Is you have to. Find several, and you and you need to support your spouse hiding from your family. I support yeah, well, this shed. I'm gonna I, get air. <laughs> I'm gonna get beautiful central air in here for him. Yeah, it is like the thing. What I would the what I would love in a house more than anything is a tiny room behind a bookshelf, like a sliding uh, bookshelf. Where you want like a speakeasy that just, no one knows. Yes, I think that's what this yeah. is. That Chris one bar created. stool speakeasy. <laughs> Now, you, uh, a touring comedian, you did a bunch of shows this year getting ready for a special. Yeah. How often do Chris and your son come with you? How often does that become a family trip? N- never. It, it At never. first, you know, if it was like I was going somewhere, like I went to the Jersey Shore, and we were like, oh, that's fun. And then, like, connect, you know, if it's, like, very close by, um, or if we can tie it in. But it's not really conducive to, I can't, like, go and be, like, a mom and, getting you know your family settled into a hotel and then is your headspace even when because i hope your answer means there's not something wrong with me okay. which is even though you know the, the more you do an hour the more you should know it and i think the more you do know it but mm-hmm. even then i don't want to spend a whole day thinking about anything other than that hour no you just can't like being on the road no matter how privileged it is it's it's really hard and it sucks. It's hard on your body and you're flying and you're, you know, you're not just going to these like fun direct cities. It's like weird places that other people don't want to go. And yeah. And like to bring your family dynamic, you know, all of a sudden they don't start treating me like an artist who's going to be performing for that night for a big audience. You know, it's like, yeah, they don't care. And it's not their fault, nor should they. No, right? no, you of can't. course not. But it's, it's not conducive. Like it's so much better for me to just go. But I'm also so I, I haven't done stand up since December since I did the special, and I like don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing stand up, right? I I as we alluded to, I'm trying to fill up my days. <laughs> <laughs> have you been writing? Like, I mean, I don't ever write, but have you been writing? I have an hour that I'm working on, and so it is nice to try to, like, come up with new ways to do that. But, you know, my stand-up is always far more apolitical than the show. Yeah. And so it is weird to watch daily events unfold that we're not talking about. Is a uh, Yeah, that's got to be so weird. There's a Because there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. But I think there'll on. be another. I'll be back. There'll be another indictment soon enough. I have think. you? <laughs> against you? I hope so. Josh, what's your relationship to the strike? Have you guys been picketing or anything? I've done a little picketing and then I've been like redoing my garage. Maybe I'm turning my garage into my secret. There you uh, go. My secret hideaway. Sounds like somebody's ready for marriage. (laughs) Yeah. Get that hideaway ready and then put a ring on it. Little workout room. I painted a couple walls. I was just going to say in terms of family trips, you know, we're lucky enough that sometimes the Seinfelds will take us with them. And it's really fun to be on somebody else's family trip and yeah. just be like the family who's trying to not get in the way, you know? And and they have, I don't know them well, but they have lovely children. 
Oh my God. Their family's the best. They're so fun to hang out with. And it's like, it's the ultimate compliment is for somebody to say like, we want you to come hang out. Uh, That just means like, you know, you're bearable. Yeah. That's amazing. That is a big, because again, to invite another family on your family trip, it has to be more than bearable. And I'm assuming that's pretty nice. You guys stay at a hotel nine. Is that true? A what? It's not a hotel what eight. Is it's this? a hotel, oh, no, it's hotel a nine. nine. It's a hotel it's a nine. nine. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's a nine. It's a nine on the scale. And uh, wait, is it a hotel six or hotel eight? Did I motel, blow my motel 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 six. six? I called it hotel eight. In my head, it was hotel eight. I, I knew what you were saying what? though. I, yeah, I, I did. Motel seven. Look, we're we're rusty. <laughs> we're rusty. I have a family trips thing to ask you, which is you. Yeah. More than a lot of people I know have a group of close friends that are like family. What would you say your core group of close women friends is? How big a number? I would say seven. Okay. You know, there's there's four from home. Like yeah. I've got four friends from home and we still every year do a vacation together. And then, you know, Bridget and uh, Bridget Everett and Rachel Feinstein. Have, and like, so how, you know, and yeah. you have taken numerous trips as a group together over the years yes yes do you have sort of a standing is it like an annual Annually. thing or it's it is yeah. it, it is annual great it is annual um, and those can stretch out those are not usually just weekends right no we we do like a week we do a week it's it's got it's getting more challenging as you know everybody with their kids and whatever and husbands and it's like okay and then are we going to do just the girls or bring the family you know it's and it's it's hard. It's just, you know, and everybody's like has their own parenting styles. Do you guys ever turn against each other over the course of a week or do you tend to keep it pretty pretty jovial? We don't fight actually. I mean, That's we impressive. of course like um kind of pair off and and you know, trash talk each other. Uh of course, like, that's part of the fun. And I know they trash talk me as soon as I'm gone and I I expect that and but no, we just really like, you know, it's just God, those those friends that you've had forever that you just know forever. It's like there's just something really relaxing about being together. And I don't know. I, we have a very close group of friends, Josh yeah. and I and 10 other guys. It's 12 wow. of us. All That's college. So many. Yeah. And we did and anybody have, did anybody get filtered out over the years? Did anybody no, get we cut? filtered? We filtered one in. We actually uh, like absorbed You're going one the more wrong guy. way with it. Yeah. It was too um, good. It, we had to share it with the world. Mm. It's great. And yeah, there's a there's a rule. There's the no poopy pants rule. And if mm-hmm. someone starts to get crabby about something or complaining about anything, it's like, hey, and someone can throw a flag on you and take it elsewhere. Like, wow. Don't do if that here. Get, if you get moody, you gotta take it outside. Yeah, or just like yeah, tap out for a minute, but we don't want okay. that. We don't want that around here. Yeah, yeah. We're not we're not here for that. Yeah. We get that we get that at home. <laughs> Have you ever had something like this happen, Amy, where it's like around this very like you do something so embarrassing and you know it's this group of people that you're gonna see so much over the years and it's such a sticky story and it's embarrassment that you'll never live it down. I'll give you my example. Yeah, please. One of my friends got married in Bermuda. And we decided we would all take scooters out for the day, this group of 12 guys. And in order to pass the scooter test, all you had to do was drive a scooter in a circle around the parking lot. I cannot stress to you how much they wanted to rent you this scooter. These were not people. Safety was not first and foremost. The the Bermuda government set the bar so low for what you had to do. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends went first, Kevin. Right, Josh? And he failed. Oh, my God. And then I was one of the people leading the charge, making fun of Kevin. Oh, no. And then I got on next, (laughs) and I drove it around totally fine, no error. And then I just had to stop in front of the guy. And I the only way I can describe it now is everything went black. And I crashed into the rack of all (laughs) the Bermuda... (laughs) Scooters. Yeah, I think you were worried about running into all the guys, and then you just like jumped off the bike as it was in motion. You knocked down a row. And I, I Pee Wee Herman the scooters, and then they had given you'd already had to fill out the paperwork and sign the waiver, and it was in your back pocket. And I sort of li- lifted myself up, and I walked over, and I I handed the waiver back to the man. Because you knew it was uh, over. I knew it was over. Took the helmet off, and then I told everyone that I wasn't going to be ready to joke about this for a couple of days. And like, how many years ago is that? That was probably like 
15 years ago. And yeah. and can you, to this day, like, do you feel ready or? Now it's ready, but sometimes I'll post a video online of one of uh-huh. my kids on a bicycle and the speed <laughs> at which they're like, I hope you, somebody else taught them how to ride a bicycle or a scooter. So. Yeah. My one friend, when when she was in um, in middle school, I won't say her name, but we were in gym in middle school and we were sitting in our squats and she farted and she was so humiliated. And I mean, we must have been 12 years old and still to this day, you know, she's 42 mother of two. Like if we bring up her farting in in gym in like, you know, seventh Mm. grade, she will like cry. Like it's like, you can't, it's so funny because if it happened to your kid, you would tell them, oh, it happens to everybody. No one's going to remember yeah. it. Everybody the honest farts. answer is no one will ever forget this. No. However bad you feel about it is accurate. How could you have done yeah. that? What's wrong with you? I yeah. love bringing it up. <laughs> just when you know something like still like just get somebody, don't you just love it? The back of my, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up at the very thought of being a 12 year old who farted. I once was on a, on a school, a field trip and sat, like just randomly got sat next to who I thought was one of the hottest girls on the bus. And I guess I was so nervous about it that I got super tired and fell asleep on top of her and like drooled all over her shirt. (laughs) And like we went over a bump and I woke up and the whole bus had been like watching and they all just like burst into laughter. Oh, uh, my God. I got too I got too nervous and I fell asleep. (laughs) Yeah, that happens with the like big anticipation stuff. My girlfriend went like skydiving and she fell asleep on the way there, fell asleep, I think, in the sky and slept the whole way home. Wow. It's just like the stress. Have you wow. sky sky dove, Josh? No, it's the only thing Dad asked us to never do, and so I huh. haven't. So this is a um, this is kind of reflecting back to family trips. My dad, for his birthday a few years ago, the thing he really wanted to do that he's never done is go up in a hot air balloon, and I said that I wouldn't do it because I was worried that if something went wrong. And the hot air balloon, like there was a rip and we, you know, we were falling to our death. I thought it would take too long for us to fall to our death and the whole family would turn on each other. I just didn't, <laughs> I, were... I'm happy to die right away. <laughs> but you but didn't want long, the, the long... A long floating trip where my mom has time to tell my dad, this is all your fault. Oh and then maybe we all gosh. catch on fire too. Like, there's... Yeah, the fire would could not come fast enough if mom was just laying into dad about like, well, I hope you're happy in your hot air balloon ride. It would be funny if you jumped off to end it quicker. Like you yeah, didn't want to yeah. be part of. Um, and then a rope got caught around his go? ankle and he was just dangling. No, he never went. Yeah. He never went. Oh, let him go. Let him Let him hot air balloon. Yeah, maybe I'll take him on a hot air balloon ride. That I'm fine with. You that guys can slowly I would, die together. I don't want, I wouldn't skydive if I could. Would you, Schumer? I did skydive. You did? I did skydive. I, I did it when I was you know, in my 20s with a boyfriend I didn't like, really like that much. So I felt weird doing it with him because I was like, I I don't really want to be making memories here. Like this isn't going to be very long. I remember he brought up season tickets for something like, should we get season tickets? And I was like, this is not. (laughs) Yeah. And I didn't like it. And uh, I felt like, you know, your, your tandem with someone. And so I felt like I needed to be performing for him like this is amazing you know he's like isn't this great you know and I'm like yeah this is great you know but I was like I don't like this and I wouldn't do this again were you nervous or bored I feel like it would be one of the two it was you know it's such a scary thought that I I just like shut my mind off to it and like yeah you know when I jumped out of the plane like just closed my eyes like I just hurled my body through the experience and then and then open my eyes and, and tried to, you know, enjoy whatever you're supposed to enjoy about it. I didn't I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Even once the, the thing opened and the thing and, you know, it was cool to be done. Like, it's cool to I like like when you're done skiing, <laughs> I like when you're when you survive. I just realized. Can you guys hear like a um, like a singing? Or is no. that not? OK, no, yeah. no. I'm not having a, 
uh, breakdown. No, you're fine. Okay. There's a little like plastic door in the attic and it's singing a song like um for oh. kids to play with. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. No, no, it it says it's a huge fan. Amy, the door. You have three kids. We do. We do. Three kids. So cute. They're little. So cute. We have traveled with all three. Have you? How is uh, how's your son as a traveler? He's a great traveler. He's having a very different experience than I did. You know, yeah. with his <laughs> with his level of privilege, it's it's pretty funny. You know, you bought him his own eel trap. That's, That's where he's right. At. <laughs> That's right. That's correct. He has a really fun vibe because he's so used to like things being kind of like everybody being pretty nice and like wanting to hang out. You know, he hasn't had like the root. He's in school and whatever, so there's little mean mean things at school. But I don't know with travel and stuff, he's just like. Saying hi to everybody and it's great. He's pumped about it. Feels very good. You know, just putting him on an airplane and putting his little headphones on him, being like, okay, and you can watch, you know, whatever on your laptop. Like he just feels like very he just looks like a little businessman. And what about Chris? Chris a good traveler? Do your vibes sync up well? Chris gets a little nervous with change. Yeah. And takes a couple days to sort of settle in wherever we go to sort of get past that. We always kind of fight the first three days we go anywhere, especially yeah. when we come um, to Martha's Vineyard because it's where he grew up. So all of those old triggers. When Alexi gets somewhere she with the kids, she yeah. unpacks a suitcase that's just full of tech. And it's all <laughs> just their nest cams. And, right, right, and right. It's, that's hilarious. You know those scenes in a movie where... <laughs> spies have an hour before people come back to their office. Yes. And so it just a team of spies goes in and they're just screwing like listening devices oh into God. light bulbs. She's just like Don Cheadle. Yeah, she's full <laughs> she fully cheetles wherever it is we're staying. Oh my God, that's amazing. And uh yeah, it's I do I don't add a lot of value on those days. <laughs> no, yeah. no. I don't really know my place in my family, but yeah, on but the stage. I do like like the idea of a road trip with the fam at some point. Yeah, where do you think you'd go? Yeah, where I don't know. Like an you know, I don't know what an airstream is. Um, but that sounds nice. Um mm-hmm. the, the name the name tickles your ear. Yeah, the, the airstream. Like I'm just I don't know what I'm picturing, but they're beautiful airstreams. I gotta yeah. Google what it is because you know it's in my ear, but it would be fun to like go on some sort of a I don't know the I don't know what route I don't know what's a good route well I mean out west all the national parks I feel like that's sort I, of the, that's the quintessential that. what's a good age to take a kid to do that 10 I don't know yeah, I, I think, think nine, you could do nine younger than that yeah okay yeah. all right I'll plan for that all right we have um we, we want to be uh sure to ask you some questions so with some quick questions These Great, we I'm ask ready. all our guests okay, okay um is your ideal vacation? You can pick one of these. Are you relaxing? Is it adventurous? Is it enlightening? Or is it educational? I think relaxing. Yeah. I want to like be able to hike. Yeah. And then like look at yeah. pretty stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't I don't like to like lay out, you know, in the sun, but I, I like to go for a walk and drink in a pool. Those, Those are good. lovely. Those are solid. Um, in your in your pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'd love to have you. Yeah. Um, do you prefer to travel by train, plane, automobile, boat, or on foot? Train. Train. Right. Train. train. You know what? I, I hope. Um, I hope uh, President Biden is listening because <laughs> we do have to make our trains a little bit nicer. I know he's a big fan, but a lot of Loves our guests him. say train. A lot of our guests say train, and the trains just we we need them to be a little bit nicer. I love Amtrak. I love a long train. I want to take Gene on like a night train where you have like a room. Yeah, the trains mm-hmm. in Europe are fun. The, the, uh, the subway. I say I love the subway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Train. Um, if you could take a vacation with any family, other than the Seinfelds, because mm-hmm. you've done that, alive or dead, fictional or real, who would? What family would you like to go on vacation with? Swiss Family Robinson. Perfect yeah. answer. Yeah. I can't believe people haven't said it yet. <laughs> I feel like they make a really cool setup wherever. That treehouse in Swiss Family Robinson is still like, what I it. thought 
That's what I thought when you made it, you'd be able to live in. Well, that's what we need to make a reality. Yeah. You know? Just a little bit less architectural digest and a little bit more, Mm -hmm. you know, tree houses that run on a pulley system. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, would be a great vacation. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and can I just say these questions are a little too hard hitting? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, we do get to the. Well, bone. here's one. Here's one that uh, I'm a public. I'm a public figure. This one might be harder hitting. Okay. If you had to be stranded on a desert island with one member of your family, who would you want to be there with you? My family. Yeah. I guess my son. Yeah. Great. You know. Great. I feel like that's very uh, that's very selfless because he's not going to help much. No, I'm going to have to do the helping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you say he's he's good. He's a good traveler. Yeah, as long as he has his laptop and his little uh, headphones. Yeah. It'll look like he's doing things to help. Yeah. Desert Desert Islands famously have outlets. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, once I get the nest set up. <laughs> yeah. You can go exploring. <laughs> Hopefully run into that guy from that cruise, from the top deck of the cruise. Maybe oh, he's at that island, too. Oh, my God. Too. I that wonder guy. if that guy knows... That I like got famous. Yeah. <laughs> and he's telling the story. Was that early in the trip? I, not to go back to this, but was no, that early in the, the cruise? No, it was the last night of the trip. Okay, gotcha. Because I would yeah. imagine like a cruise hookup, you got to be real sure or just save it for the last night. It was the last night. Okay, yeah, that wouldn't have, I don't think that would have aged well. And was the was the deck of the ship just littered with people who were hooking it up on the was, last night? No, it was very much closed. The okay. stairs, the, you know, it was very, very late at night. And we had to disembark the next morning, and I was like oh, gotcha. hungover, and just you know. That's I was when like, oh, two, uh, when, if young people are listening, to, uh, disembark is when two uh, bodies, <laughs> poise codal bodies, uh, remove themselves from one another. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> You're from Long Island, yeah. Yeah. What town specifically? Rockville Center. Now I've I've not been to Rockville Center. Would you recommend Rockville Center as a place for other people to go on vacation? No, on a vacation? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your honesty. I, I would recommend raising a family there. They have good schools. It's you know, pretty racist, pretty anti Semitic, but you know, where where isn't? And there's nice beaches. I grew up going to Long Beach, nice beaches, but no. All right. Would you would you recommend people go to Bedford, New Hampshire? Yeah, for a no, vacation. I would say we're nearby. I'd say we're like, right? Like 40 minutes from like good New Hampshire sort of vacation-y areas. Yeah. But we're a little, we're a little sort of basic suburb. A beautiful, again. Right. You could stay in Rockville Center and you could go and be in Manhattan in, you know, 30 minutes and you could be at the beach in 20 minutes. So, you know what? Go on a vacation to Rockville Center. Go, enjoy there yourself. You go. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Seth has our closing okay. question. Oh, okay. Grand Canyon, have you been? No. Do you want to go? Not really. Okay, thank I've, you. I've flown over it. Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot of people try to get away with that as their answer. That doesn't count. Uh, you yeah, know, I just, I've never like, you know, people are, oh, you can ride a donkey. Yeah, that's what Josh wants to do. You'll see uh, tarantulas and I'm like, oh, that sounds great. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but Utah, I go to an almond. I'm in Geary or uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, beautiful. Yeah, there you go. But just, you know, you're anti uh, giant holes in the ground. You always have been. I don't want to go to that hole. <laughs> yeah. Josh, you want to go to that hole? I want to go to that hole. Yeah, I def do. But I, yeah, I haven't been, haven't been in it, seen it, but I haven't been in it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel pulled to the hole. All right. Amy, it has been a delight talking to you. Thank you so much for making time for family trips with the Myers Brothers. My absolute pleasure. Thank good you. Good luck with the shed. Oh my God, thank you. Yeah. It really is lovely. Can I just show you one other thing about the shed? Yeah. Which is Chris's, he's been into this for, I don't know, a couple months now. You see this thing hanging right here? That's, what is it? It's weighted clothing. Which he's Oh, sleeping. like yeah. to sleep in? Nope. He wears it all day under his clothes just to give himself a little edge. Like he's getting a little more of a workout than weighted wow, clothing. Wow, weighted clothing. Yeah. And huh. it's just, you know, one of the wonders of marriage. I was going to say, Josh, if you wear a weighted clothing all day, that'll give you a taste of what being married is like. Exactly. <laughs> but I'll, you know, if I do go to like touch him, like kind of give a, you know, spousal support. And then I feel that he has a weighted clothing on. I'm so repelled. Yeah. <laughs> It would be like finding out your husband is just 
just to be safe wearing a bulletproof vest around you at all times. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it feels like. And it's like, okay. Um, and so I'm seeing you in like a couple weeks, right? I'm seeing you in a couple weeks. I love all you right. very much. Love Congrats you. on the special. It's called Emergency Contact. You can see it on Netflix. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Amy wanted to go to the sea and called her grandma with the Super mean, but took her on a cruise and paid for everything. They got Coco Loco down in Martinique, and then they compared their kickbox technique. Granny gambled while Amy boozed, and then she made herself a super handsome dude. And well, down below, her granny slept. He went down too, but on the upper deck. Thanks to 